So hey guys, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is sponsored by Julia Hair. If you guys want to skip right to my commentary, I will put the time marker down on the screen. So they sent me this wig. It actually is a silk based wig and the body wave texture all the way in 26 inches. So I did get a long wig and it was constructed pretty well. As you guys can see, the knots do not come bleached and it is a silk base. And I'm going to show you guys how I prep this wig. So starting off, I'm going to be bleaching the knots on the part of the frontal area that is not silk based. So I'm taking in a bowl with a knife and I'm also going to take some toner powder in the collider colors in blue I'm going to be using 30 volume developer to develop the bleach as well as the BW2 powder to bleach the hair and I'm going to be putting all of those things together mixing it up and I'm going to be applying this onto the wig so like I said this is a silk base unit and I'm actually going to be removing that silk eventually down the line but I wanted to bleach the front area first because that is the part that matters the most and the part that needs to look the most natural so after applying on the bleach to the front perimeter of the hair I let the bleach sit for 15 minutes and when it was finished I took the foil wraps that I used to help process the hair and I removed that from the front perimeter and exposed the wig and this is what the wig looked like so we're gonna get into coloring this hair I'm using the L'Oreal high color highlights in the color magenta and I wanted to go for a deep red color because I don't want anything too bright and it was actually very easy to do so I took the tube and I used four boxes I placed them all into the bowl used some 30 volume developer to go over it and just mix it together and it's as easy as that that is all I needed to do to make my hair color so they do have like blondes and some other shades of red and I would highly recommend this product because you don't have to bleach the hair you can put it on dark hair and get a color that is very vibrant and very popping so the concoction came out really bright red and I just applied this all over my hair unit making sure that I coated it thoroughly now in the end I actually wish I would have brought the hair color up way closer to the actual root of the hair because I love the way how it came out but after letting it sit for about a day even though it says only 30 minutes this is what the hair color looked like and it was pretty dry and then I just went to go ahead and wash it out so I just washed it out with some warm water as well as my regular shampoo and conditioner make sure you guys read the instructions on the box if necessary to know how it will react to your own natural hair so I cut off that extra silk area because I realized silk closures are just not natural to me I just prefer a lace closure so I went ahead and bleached that area and when I rinsed it out this is what the hair looked like as you guys can see the red is very vibrant and I do love how it's very subtle it's not too in your face it's like the perfect red for girls that are of a darker complexion so we're gonna work with the parting area and I'm just going for a middle part I ran out of mousse so I used some water in a spray bottle and just saturated the part area after pulling it out I used some got to be glue spray and I'm just gonna be putting that over the area as well to kind of create like a mold or a cast for my part to lay so that I know that it's nice and flat and then I'm going to be using some tweezers and going through and creating that long deep part that we all love so with styling I decided to go for wand curls which I actually ended up redoing so this is not even the style that I used in the final clip but I went through the entire head from the bottom to the top I sectioned it off and I did wand curls pretty tight wand curls and it just reminded me of high school because I used to love wand curls in high school I used to do them all the time and this is like definitely a signature wand curl style from Chama so this is what it looked like when it was all said and done and I saturated this area here so that you guys can see that red color so the L'Oreal high color highlights I would definitely recommend these products and again I use four boxes for the whole head now this is what a hair looked like when I actually went to go put the wig on and I'm using the got to be glue gel and the black bottle to adhere the wig and I wasn't going to be wearing the wig for that long so I didn't really feel the need to make sure that it was adhered down with like the most tacky and most hardcore gel or hardcore glue I just used that got to be glue gel then I used the got to be glue spray on top of that I did dab off any excess that was falling everywhere and I used a blow dryer to just get it a little bit tacky and dry a little bit faster and I went ahead and put the wig over top of that and just let it sit now I did use like a little band off camera to tie it down and then when I was done with everything I went ahead and cut off that excess lace around my ear and around the front of my wig so next was just to bring down the hair and just to style it and move it around and zhuzh it and move and making sure that it sits the way how I want it to sit 
and I took a wide tooth comb and I just kind of went through the hair, making sure that I was brushing out the curls. I redid the curls so that it can be a little bit looser because I didn't like how it was just kind of too much for me. And this is pretty much the final look of the color. Like I said, I wish I would have brought it up right to the root because this color is so beautiful and the hair took to the color completely well. Definitely check down below and let's get right into this video. I'm back with another video. So today's video is yet again another Chama Chats video. Never pay attention. Chama Chats. 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 Chama so today's video is yet again another Chama Chats video. So by today's title, we're gonna be talking about this story that I came across on Instagram. I actually meant to film this video like months back, but I'm just now getting to it. Now, before we get started, I did wanna introduce our sponsor like I did at the beginning of this video. So this hair is from Julia Hair. As you guys can see, I colored this hair myself and I got this burgundy color using the L'Oreal High Color Highlights. I didn't have to bleach the hair. I didn't have to do all that extra stuff. I literally just put the hair color in the bowl, put some developer and mixed it and applied it to my hair and it got this color so I wish I would have took it like all the way up but I wasn't sure how it was gonna look but this red color this is how I got it so if you guys want any of the information on the wig down below in the description box you guys can click on those links and that will answer all your questions on this hair so let's get right into this video so I'm gonna be reading from my phone and the headline to this story says Houston woman shares her unfortunate experience trying to get her makeup done at Ulta Beauty as a dark skinned woman now I wanted to make this video because I feel like from middle school slash high school up until where I'm at now, there has been an extreme transformation of the beauty industry as it relates to dark skin, skin complexion, just complexion products, range, you know, availability, what is being offered by these companies. It took for Rihanna to make Fenty Beauty with all those shades that could fit just about everyone, for companies to have a little fire underneath their ass and actually start representing other darker skin shades on the spectrum of skin color in their collections. And why it took this long I don't know it wasn't like these companies were not able to mix up the concoctions to make darker shades they just weren't doing it not because there wasn't a demand not because we didn't want them to not because we were looking ashy for the longest time just because they didn't because this is a white dominated world so to hear this experience of this woman from Houston especially being that this was her baby shower makeup and everybody knows for any event whether it be high school graduation baby shower wedding your birthday maybe your friend's birthday maybe you're going out on a date for the first time you want your makeup to always look flawless whether you wear a lot of makeup or a little bit of makeup, whether you do use foundation or if you just wear powder. So the woman says, so today at Ulta Beauty in Homedale, I went to get my makeup done for my baby shower. I brought in the picture for reference and I was told that my skin tone was too dark for most colors in the store. So this was the best she could do. She then asked if I ever gotten my makeup done professionally. It was sad AF. Like I felt like I was in 1990 when makeup was made for one type of skin. In a store full of people who didn't look like me, I felt sad and upset. Like my skin tone was a problem. Thank God for makeup like Fenty Beauty for being so progressive, but I honestly think hashtag Ulta Beauty should give their makeup artists some diversity training and teach them how to glamorize all skin types. So then she goes on and adds an update and it says, so the store I was at called me. The manager is apparently biracial and witnessed the entire situation. She and the corporate manager were in the store. They didn't step in because they didn't want to make a big scene. She feels comfortable doing black makeup and wants to do my makeup over. And then she shares some pictures of what her makeup looked like as well as a reference picture. I wanted to share this story because it seems like a lot of times I've been in a makeup store whether it be Ulta or Sephora or Mac or whatever and a lot of their workers are not diverse and not only are the workers not diverse they act as if makeup is some form of complexity when it comes to complexion products. We've been matching colors and figuring out colors since we were like five years old in kindergarten and primary school. There is no way that someone who is working at a makeup store should not be able to make your makeup look good and match your makeup and that just goes to show that a lot of times I feel like and I take this with a grain of salt, but a lot of times I feel like when white people are doing a black person's makeup, it's almost like it's a challenge for them to match the skin tone because I feel like when a lot of white women wear makeup, they're going for like a darker look. They're going for like a more reddish, more tanned look when it comes to their skin. A lot of them like to look a little bit more bronze and that's just the common denominator that I've seen. I'm not saying that's for every woman and her type of doing her makeup, but this has happened to me where I've gone into a store and I've tried to get my makeup done or at least buy a new foundation and get my makeup matched and get a skin test and for whatever reason 
and they match me all the same. Have you guys ever had the experience where you're trying to get Mac and they're like, okay, you're the studio fix or whatever it's called and you're NC50, NC50. It's like almost everyone is NC50 when we're really not. So I broke this video down into three quick talking points, so let's get right into this video. So first and foremost, representation is super important because I feel like if it wasn't for representation now, this would have been kind of sifted underneath the rug. Like it would have been like, okay, a black woman walked into a makeup store and they didn't have her shade, so it is what it is and we're just gonna leave it at that. When that used to be the case, it used to be the case where you would go into a makeup store and they didn't have your shade or you only had like three options to choose from when it came to complexion products. And then now, because representation is so important, times have changed. And that's why it's really progressive to talk about these issues because if it wasn't for the outrage from black women who are in the makeup industry and the desire and the necessity for there to be representation, a lot of these companies would still be sitting there stagnant acting as if they can't go to the actual lab and get all these cosmetic scientists and mix up some more chemicals to make complexion products for our skin tones and our skin shades. Ironically, the woman in this situation, her name is Ebony and Ebony does mean dark as it relates to shade or color and it's like this is why we need representation because she's a dark-skinned woman and she ended up looking ashy and whether you're a makeup artist or not you can tell when someone's makeup is kind of off-putting when it's not their right shade for crying out loud do you know how many people will sit in the comments and talk about my makeup never matches and I have different shades of brown that cover my entire body my neck is different than my chest my chest is different than my face my face is different than my jaw like it's just a whole bunch of different colors which is why we need makeup products that actually go with our skin tone and the major point of this is that it is not not hard to match somebody's skin tone to a foundation color okay it's literally like matching anything like it's not hard to match I never understand why people act like there's this difficulty to make up these products and then to match them correctly now point number two is that I feel like non woman of color makeup artists do this a lot where oftentimes like I said they match your skin color to a foundation that is not for your skin that doesn't look right and it's almost like do you not see that this is not my skin complexion and I feel like a lot of black women have had this issue where you're trying to get some bright products for yourself and and the worker who just so happens to be a white girl does not know how to match it to your skin complexion and they think that doing your makeup has to look a certain way and that's just not the case again I'm not talking about every makeup artist that is white or every makeup worker that is white but I feel like a lot of them do give these excuses where it's like it's too dark for what they have in the store like in this situation where they said okay well you're too dark for the complexion products that we have in our store and it's just like you can never tell anybody that they're too dark or too light and if that is the case you're better off telling that same client or customer how about you go here how about you go there how about you do this refer this person to this individual don't take on the project knowing that you can't do it especially for something as important as someone's baby shower now point number three is that it is 2020 and makeup inclusivity is more than a thing like it's been here and it's super necessary this situation is completely unacceptable that a black dark-skinned woman can walk into a makeup store in 2020 and be told that her skin is too dark for complexion products or that she doesn't have this or that and have to be tossed around like a hot potato trying to get the right person to do her makeup for her on such an important day. There is no compensation for her hurt ego. There is no compensation for a tainted confidence. And the fact that her baby shower or any event cannot be redone is what kills me the most because looking at these photos of her, it's like she does not look happy. She doesn't look confident. She doesn't look like she's ready to take on this new chapter of her life. Thanks to someone being so inconsiderate and not doing their job and not being a real makeup artist and making the client look beautiful on her day. I say this to say diversity training isn't going to fix this. This is just negligence and this is just someone not doing their job. This is what you call superiority complex because this is an issue that those workers never have to deal with going to a store and being able to choose so many foundations that fit your complexion is almost a privilege and as a black woman it's hard to go into these stores especially when you're on a budget and you want to go drugstore route whether you're going to Walmart or Target CVS trying to find complexion products and they don't offer what you need for your complexion and for your shade they limit their selection and it's not even like if you go to the urban areas it's any better it's everywhere you go and it really sucks that in 2020 these things are still happening that some makeup companies are not being inclusive in the ways that we need to and it's not even like this was a brand like a NYX or a Kat Von D or a NARS. This is the actual worker of Ulta and it's really a reflection on what type of workers they're putting out there to help women embrace beauty and do it through makeup. So all in all, honestly y'all, I don't let white people do my makeup, let alone touch my face. And I don't mean that to be in a racist way. I'm pretty sure there are white makeup artists that can slay me, but I just haven't had the best of luck in that regard. And I feel like as 
Black women, our skin and our melanin is so rich and it's so, you know, particular that another black woman doing my makeup would completely understand what products work for my skin. Whether it means I have oily skin, dark skin, sensitive skin. I feel like when I go to a black makeup artist or just talk to people who are black who like makeup, I get better tips or a little bit more relation there than going to a white makeup artist because I found myself in this position plenty of times. And when it comes to social media, I have yet to find a makeup artist like on Instagram who does a range of clients and I mean every shade dark light in between olive yellow all of that because it seems like people stick to what they know within themselves which is fine but I find it very weird that within makeup we still have that problem where inclusivity is still hard when it comes to the workers and the products that are available for the masses let's not forget not everyone can go spend $50 on a foundation some people do want to go the cheaper route and this client is not wrong for going to also trying to get a service done and her service should have been met. Now I will say this to sis, I would have never came in there as a black woman with that photo as a reference and then just went willy nilly hey somebody do my makeup. I think my makeup is particular, I want myself to look a certain way, I just don't trust other people with my face but that is me. To me someone being darker should not initiate any difference in the way how a client should be treated as well as the things that they are told as well as the service they're given and the final product of the makeup there shouldn't be any excuse just because someone has darker skin especially not in 2020 so that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed what are your thoughts on my commentary don't forget to look at our sponsor of this hair from julia hair and how i did my hair and definitely leave a comment down below don't forget to follow me on all my social media networks and i'll see you guys in my next video bye guys Sponsor,